Well, bless these friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle. And Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, as we continue to work our way through the book of 1 John, today we are in chapter 3. And we're going to cover the remainder of chapter 3 because it's pretty much wrapped up in one single four-letter word, which is this, love. And not just love, but what true love is and love in action. And this is really contained in verse 14 of chapter 3 because it says, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Now, I can tell you from personal testimony, friends, before I met the Savior, I was all about me, selfish, self-focused. When it came to me and someone else, it was always me. But from the moment that I met the Savior, he changed my heart. He took that old stony hard heart out that was all about me, and he gave me a new soft tender heart that was moved by the needs of others, that felt what others felt. When they wept, I wept. When they laughed, I laughed. I became one with others denying myself. And that's the message of the gospel. And that's what this is telling us here. We know that we have passed from death unto life. That old hard heart is passed away and a new tender heart of flesh has been given us. Why? Because we love the brethren. And not just the brethren, but every single human being on planet Earth. Our closest loved one, or if it's a member of ISIS. It doesn't matter if it's someone that we worship with, or if it's our most severe enemy. It doesn't matter. The love of God pours forth from us. And look at what verse 16 says. It says, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And again, I would emphasize, this isn't just those that we worship with, just those who are in the family of God with us. Certainly it applies, but this is for every human being. We should be willing to lay down our lives for our enemies because that's what Jesus Christ did. Before we became followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we were his enemies. When Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. And there was a time in my life, and I'm sure there was a time in your life, when you was not for the master. And so you were his enemy. You were fighting against him. But the moment that you surrendered your life, laid down your life, picked up your cross, and became a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, at that very moment, we took on the same aspect, the same character of who he is. As he was willing to lay down his life for his enemies, so must we be willing to do the same. Now look at verse 18. It says, let us love not in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Let us put feet on our love, show our love by the things that we do, and sometimes by the things that we don't do. In other words, actions speak louder than words. It's easy to say that we love someone. And it's easy to love people when it's convenient. But what about when it's inconvenient? What about when it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you receive that phone call and someone needs your help? Are you going to put it off till morning, daylight hours? Or are you going to get up and meet them in their need right there on that spot? Or what about when loving others brings you favor and honor? Well, it's at those times that it's easy to love. But what about when loving others brings you no honor? What about when loving others means that you're going to receive nothing back? I mean, remember, Jesus said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand do is doing. Don't do things to be seen by men, which means you should be seeking opportunity to do things for people and you totally remain unnamed, anonymous. You never receive that pat on the back. You never receive the recognition. The only recognition comes from knowing that in your heart, you have done what it is that your master has commanded you to do. And not only commanded you to do, but placed a real desire within your heart to do. You see, friends, I'll end by saying this. We live in a country here in America that we are so preoccupied with self, self-gratification, self-pleasure, self-advancement, that we forget about the large number of people out there who are suffering on our streets. Mothers who cannot feed their children. Fathers who cannot find work. 
children who are on their own and have been abandoned by those who should be caring for them. Veterans who are coming back from fighting for us to protect us. And a high percentage of them are homeless on the streets because our government won't even take care of them. I mean, some of us are so focused on amassing our own treasure, building our own lives. We have motorcycles and jet skis and, and two cars and, and on and on the list goes. Numerous amounts of clothes. Some of those clothes we don't even wear. They just hang in the closet or sit in the drawer. And shoes and jewelry and on and on and on. And people all around us are going hungry, are cold, are miserable and sick and diseased. And look at what verse 17 says. It says, Whoso has this world's goods, how much of this world's goods do you have, friend? And you see your brother in need. You can't ignore it. It's all around you. You know that your brother and sister are in need. And you shut up your bowels of compassion so that you can hoard it all to yourself. How dwelleth the love of God in you? How can you lay down and sleep at night? I mean, look at what verse 20 says. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. But if our heart, in verse 21, does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. You know what that means? That means your conscience. If your conscience is pricked, then friends, listen to your conscience and do whatever it takes to bring ease to your conscience. But if there's something in your conscience that troubles you, then there's no way that you can have confidence toward God in verse 21. The only way you can have confidence toward God is to have a clean, clear conscience. So if there's anything bugging you, if there's anything that rises to the surface, as the Holy Spirit points these things out, listen, friend, obey, make them right, and then you will walk in the joy of your Lord. That's the essence of the book, friends. Remember what he said in chapter 1, verse 4? These things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. And what he's saying is, look, I know why your joy is not full. I know why it's not complete, because there are things that you should be doing that you're not doing. Start doing them. Don't let the pleasures and the treasures of this world keep you from walking in absolute pure confidence and joy before your God and King. Don't do it, friends. It's not worth it. Get it out of your life. Take the words of your Messiah seriously. And just as he sold the rich young ruler, sell all that you have, give the money to the poor, come and follow me. Because in breaking the shackles that have bound you by your material possessions, the things in this life that you hold dear and that you love, by freeing yourself from those things, you will truly come to know what freedom is. That's the message, friends. I can lead you to water, but I can't make you drink. I hope that you're down on your knees, lapping in these truths like a thirsty dog, hungry for the word of God and willing to do whatever it takes to know the full joy of your Lord. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what the Holy Spirit says through Paul. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what he wants you to know. Do you know it? Well, then you have to ask yourself the simple question. If your answer to that is no, why don't you know it? And maybe the same things that kept these people 2,000 years ago from knowing the joy of their Lord is the same thing that's keeping you from knowing the joy of your Lord. Friends, I love you. I lift you up each day in prayer. I pray that you'll continue to do the same for us. Now, as Yahweh wills, as Jesus wills, and until tomorrow, I will see you on the next video.